The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. I'm delighted to introduce my guest today, Mariana De Leon, a recent graduate from Santa Maria High School. Mariana, you just graduated from Santa Maria High School, valedictorian of your class, associated student body president. You led your future Farmers of America team as a junior to national championship, and now you're headed to Harvard University. Congratulations, Mariana, and thank you for being my guest today. I'm honored to be here and yeah, super excited to have recently graduated and everything else that entails and comes after that. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. We're all so excited to hear all about your current successes, your future successes and your goals. Um, and I think what, what a great place to start would be at the very beginning. So let's go back to your childhood. Tell us about where you were born, raised, your childhood growing up. Um, so. Yeah, I can start from the beginning. That's actually, I feel like super old. That's a long time ago. Um, I was actually born in Mexico, so um, I was there up until two years old, and then almost two years old, and then I came to the United States. So I don't really remember that phase of the life, but I know it, a lot of it, it's tied a lot to how I grew up and everything else. Um, I came to the United States. I only spoke Spanish, so that was a lot, big part of growing up in my childhood. And so I had to learn the English language, and it's a very intricate language, very hard to learn. And I struggled a little bit there. Um, however, once I started the educational system here in the United States, it was actually pretty awesome. It's It was nice going to school and things like that, even though it was pretty hard because I was learning the English language. Yes. Having, um, knowing multi-languages is such an asset. You grew up speaking Spanish, you mastered English, obviously, and you said just now it was a difficult thing to do. Uh, what did learning a different language and learning a different system mean to you in terms of uh, mastering that? I think the biggest thing that stood out even when I was small and I didn't really comprehend what I was doing and how hard the task was, was the fact that once I learned the English language and starting school here in the United States, that would really help me become part of the United States and really like embrace my new home. I think I'm one of those people that just really like to be in the depths of what I'm at and I'm all about feeling at home and feeling like I made a new family. Mm -hmm. So embracing the English language and being able to do that and even though it was super hard and I had to struggle and I worked and I worked, once I mastered it, it was awesome because I finally felt like I was doing something and I can conversate with my friends and things like that and I was doing things correctly. So it was actually pretty awesome. I made like a new home and I love that feeling of home that I got here in the United States. That's fantastic. So give a shout out to some of the schools you attended. Uh, we know you graduated from Santa Maria High School, but what schools did you attend before then? Um, so I actually started off in Sanchez Elementary School. I went there for kindergarten through second grade. Midway through second grade, I moved to Ariana's, and Ariana's Elementary has been my, it's all my mater all the way through. I actually, though, had a small stint halfway through sixth grade. I didn't graduate from Ariana's Elementary. I went over to Guadalupe, and I was a member of Kermit McKenzie Junior High School, so that was interesting. And then I came back and finished junior high, Ariana Junior High, and then from there straight to Santa Maria High School. So I've kind of moved around, but it's been fun. Yeah, good. Well, that, that leads me to another question, which is around eighth grade, you won an award, the Migrant Student of the Year Award, I believe. Tell me, tell us what that me meant to you to receive that award. What was that award for and what did it mean to you? Um, so the biggest thing, it was a huge honor. Um, I've been part of the migrant education program since a kindergartner, um, seeing as my, my parents both work in the field. So we've been migrating around Santa Maria due to work conditions and what, what work they can find. But the migrant education program is actually one of the best programs I can, I can like advocate for. They help students in and off. Um, even during school, we'd get help with like, if we needed school supplies, if we needed extra after school tutoring, things like that. But then summer school came around in summer and then I'd be attending summer school. I got a head start for the next year coming up. So it was just a program that helped me out. And when I got to eighth grade, um, the junior high schools, they actually, the principals nominate one student from the migrant education program. And I was super honored that my principal nominated me. We had to write a small essay um, about 
our stories growing up, and then we had to recite those essays, and then they choose a winning essay, and you'd be the student, um, the Migrant Student Education Program um, Student of the Year, and I won. So that was super exciting. I and. As soon as I won it, I think it was really, really cool. I think the biggest thing I remember my mom being super, super proud because this program has helped me and to be able to be like the face and like the poster child of a program that's helped you so much and just to keep advocating for it, I think was the greatest thing. So yes, it was a huge honor. It is a huge honor. It's really wonderful to hear about this and I can see how I'm sure your parents were very proud of you. You talked about your mother and I, I know that you're very proud of her. Tell us a little bit about your mother. I know you give her a lot of credit for who you are and who you're continuing to become. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know I always, whenever people ask me, I'm always going to get teary-eyed and like a little choked up because my mom, like I've told everybody so many times, I'm always going to say she's like my hero. Like we all had that hero. My mom was like Wonder Woman when I was smaller and she's been my backbone. Everything I do, I do for her just to make her proud. Mm -hmm. So the successes I'm having, I'm just, I know I'm super excited for myself, but a part of it is that excitement comes from how much it means to my mom and how proud I'm making her. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the coolest thing. And yeah, I love her so much. It, you, I can tell. I think yeah. all of us can tell, and that's really wonderful. Has she given you any particular words of wisdom as you're going off here to school, or uh, not yet? Um, so we're kind of in the awkward stage. She doesn't. <laughs> she, I don't know if she's fully comprehending. I'm about to leave across the country, so we're in the awkward stage trying to figure out how that's going to work out. But. We've actually had a couple of conversations about going to college, and I think the biggest one she's saying is to have fun and just to get involved and keep on like focusing and studying hard on my education and things like that. So that's going to be her continual advice she's always giving me. Mm -hmm. Sounds like very consistent yes. advice because <laughs> when you went to Santa Maria High School, it sounds like she gave you the same advice, although mm -hmm. I think it came from you as well. You were very involved in school and activities. One of the activities is the Future Farmers of America. Yeah. Not everybody knows what FFA is about. Can you just share what the program is about? when you started it at Santa Maria High School? Yeah, so I, I love this aspect of talking about FFA. It's gonna, it's gonna be my, that was like my family at Santa Maria High School. Um, so Future Farmers America, an organization nationwide that focuses on, first of all, advocating for agriculture because that's kind of, not, not a lot of people understand how important agriculture is and how important it is to feed all the people of this world. So we focus on agriculture, advocating for it, keep on keeping it going. But another part of it which has helped me is the focus they have on student improvement, student success. So they focus on student development, developing all our areas, whether it be public speaking, personal leadership, um, career success, things like that. So we do agriculture, we do student development, and then we tie that in with different projects that have to do with agriculture and student development, like animal raising or raising plants or crop building or working in agricultural organizations or areas. So I think FFA is amazing, and I would always, always advocate for kids joining this program if they ever have one at their high schools. It's such an incredible program. You describe it really well, and you're a really great advocate for it, for sure. <laughs> um, and in your junior, you were in FFA for all four years? Yes, I was. Okay. So then tell us about your junior year. It was very special. You went to the national championships and, and won, mm -hmm. um, a first since 1931, yeah. right? So tell us about that championship year and how did it come to be? Um, so it all started my ninth grade year. Um, our our coach, Mr. Powell, he kind of has a way of recruiting kids. He finds like the most intelligent and the smartest, and then he get, he got one of his actual um, his his older members of the team to come up to me and be like, and told me, you should come to one of our practice after school. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. I was all up for my freshman year joining clubs and getting involved. So I went to one of them and I saw them tasting milk and spitting milk out and it was, it was interesting. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to do it though. I didn't know how good I'd be. However, I stuck with it. And uh, my freshman year, we got third in the state. It was definitely like a stepping stone getting to where we wanted. My sophomore year, we worked hard. Um, we had different competitions up and down different colleges, um, agricultural colleges, and we kept on winning. So that was cool. That just um, was kind of like a shout out to this, how hard we've been working with the team. And then May came around and we won the state championship for California. We were state champions. And then the national championship, that's a whole nother area. The state championship and the national championship were very different. And so we had to relearn a lot of, we had to learn a whole lot of new things to try to win the national championship. We were competing against states that continuously won this, like Washington and Texas had huge dairy programs. And, but we worked hard and we knew it was possible when we got there and we won. It's, it's crazy. Even now I, I'm still like, did I really win? <laughs> Even though there's like a banner of our team in the ag department, our school, but 
it was, it's been crazy and it's going to be one of the best moments of my life. I will always remember hearing our name as the national champions. I'm sure that you probably were shouting out yes, loud. Yes, I was and crying and a lot of the things. <laughs> where, where did those take place? The um, so they took place in um, Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So it was super cool. I got to travel across the country. It was like a little trip slash vacation slash competing. So I was in all these modes, but it's a beautiful area. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing. And the, and the winning team, it really isn't just one person. It's a whole team. What are some of the characteristics of that team that really got you through to the end, to that final championship? I think the biggest characteristic is we all kind of some, saw similar qualities in each other that we all each possessed. I think the biggest one is working hard and being super competitive because even within our team, we always compete against each other. If one of us beat the other one, we'd be like, nope, we're getting you back. <laughs> Things like that. So hard workers and we super competitive. I think, But I think the biggest one is how much we loved each other and like it became a family. And I think you can't, have any success if you don't trust each other and you don't develop that family bond. So we call each other Dairy Sisters. So we will always be Dairy Sisters and that was like a Dairy family. So I think that was the biggest, biggest component of our success and winning. The I family love it. Component. I love it. So not only were you super involved in FFA, you were also involved in government at school. You had held offices each year. Tell us about the offices you held. Yeah, so another part of it was ASB, so Associate Student Body. This I kind of glanced into this club very, very I didn't I wasn't planning to go into it, however, I was not accepted into the AVID program, so this was my alternative. And I was like, yes, let's do it. So I became part of the government school. It's a big job, um, leading all the other clubs and things like that. So my freshman and sophomore year, I just decided to lay back and see the scope things out and see how I fit into the program and kind of learn from the older members. But by my junior year, I was like, I'm ready to do this. Let's get an officer position because I was very passionate of what I'm doing and learning the different skills that I learned through ASB was amazing. I got this officer position and learned a lot of the ins and outs. And I loved it immensely. I love being able to lead other kids and kind of being like the role model, model and like, especially like new freshmen coming to ASB, I love being able to like help them out and get them adjusted to the club. And so I, um, junior year, I had my position and then for, so, uh, senior year, I was like, I'm going all in, let's do this. So I went for it, um, I got it and it's it was an amazing feeling. Um, it was also very stressful and tiring at times to kind of be like the lead of a club so big, especially when you're kind of in other clubs at school. And ASB and FFA, they kind of, they're the big, they're the big honchos at Santa Maria High School. So it was interesting, like seeing the two aspects and how they fit together. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was very amazing being able to be part, part of both families at Santa Maria High School. That's great. You just said all in. I have a feeling, Mariana, that you're always all in. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, so you learned lessons. I know you learned lessons as being an ASB officer and president your senior year. How do you think you'll apply those lessons as you move on to your freshman, a new freshman year at Harvard in the fall? Um, so I learned I, a lot of lessons. I think as you grow older, you just kind of start reminiscing and thinking about the lessons you learn. I think the biggest one is to get involved and don't be afraid of getting involved in something you might be totally unknown to or not familiar with. I think that's what I did with ASB and FFA. I didn't have any ties in with those two different organizations and I did it. I just dived in and I was, I'm going to go for it. And I think I'm going to take that to Harvard and as a freshman, definitely try to apply that and get involved in clubs that I know will help me widen my heart and my perspective and will make Help me, help me have fun because I think that's the biggest thing. Have fun in college while learning and really applying yourself. So I think that's one of the biggest lessons I'll take to college with me. That's great. And Harvard is such a prestigious university. I, can, I know we all can see you fit right in. You're going to take over the school, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and, and I heard that you haven't yet visited. You plan on go When yeah. you move, you will be seeing it for the first yes. time. Um, so that's really exciting. <laughs> Tell us about the process of applying and being accepted to Harvard. Um, so the process started, I've told this kind of story a lot of times, started in second grade, I saw Legally Blonde, I think we've, a lot of us have seen it, and the whole Harvard prestigious college, super pretty, things like that really caught my attention, and um, the main um, character, she went for law school, and as soon as she did it, she kind of learned a lot of lessons, she became a whole different person, she kind of got like an iron backbone and I think that's the biggest thing I took from there and I, was, and I told myself I'm going to do that too. And so from second grade onward, um, Harvard has always just been like a little nugget in the back of my mind and then finally when we came to high school, college becomes real as soon as you enter freshman year because everybody tells you don't mess up freshman grade count, things like that. So I really focused myself and then I worked hard um, 
grade wise, getting involved wise, just to be that well rounded person you always hear about for college applications and call it the college process. Finally, senior year came around and while the college process is hard, it's it's a crazy trying to choose where you want to go to, what you have to do for it. It's like essays, grades, transcripts, recommendations, super crazy. Um, but I knew right away Harvard was gonna it's gonna be my number one. So I worked really hard. Um, they have a whole separate process actually from the UCs. So it was kind of going into unknown waters because not a lot of people decided to apply to privates, especially any of the Ivies from Santa Maria High School. So it was kind of unknown waters. I had some help though. And so I had to write my personal statement, the application process complete um, its own for Harvard College. And then I applied, definitely scariest moment of my life. And then I had to wait. So it was intense. And how did it feel? What did, what did you get in the mail? Did you get a phone call? What happened? How did no, you know No, I you was got actually, um, we have our portals and they say they would post it on there. Um, I, it was 2 p.m. and I got an email, um, just my regular email said, please check your portal. There's, there's been decision updates. And I was in physics and I was like, oh, I can't check it right now. Like, <laughs> So I had to wait, but I had also made the decision that I was going to wait until I had my whole family with me to open in front of them. So I had a basketball game that night. So I didn't get home till like 10.30ish, 11. And that's actually when I opened my decision letter or my decision email on my portal. And as soon as I saw like CON, like the C-O-N, I was like, ah! I jumped on my red, didn't even read the rest of the letter. And I just started crying, screaming. It was, it was definitely very crazy. That is, sounds really crazy. One thing that may, we might do talk about crazy is we should send this video to uh, Reese Witherspoon, the actress in uh, the movie that you mentioned. I think she'd be very inspired to hear from you that you that she inspired you. Um, so what do you intend to study at Harvard? Um, so I actually, funny thing, um, when I want soon of the year, my eighth grade year, we actually got a trip to Washington, D.C., and Washington DC is like steeped in history and the whole history vibe, the, how the country was founded is immense in the East Coast. As soon as I went through that trip, um, I was set. I'm gonna, I love history, so I became like a history buff, loved all my history classes I took in high school. So I will be majoring in history with, um, well, they call it concentrations over there, they're super weird. But I will be <laughs> concentrating in history with a minor concentration in political science to try to get into Harvard Law School in four years. Wonderful. None of us have any doubt that what you have your <laughs> eyes set on is what you probably will attain. Uh, Mariana, you've clearly been so successful. Um, all of the different things we've already talked about. One thing you mentioned just a minute ago is basketball. You were the captain of the basketball team also. I mean, one success after another. And you also mentioned being a role model, and you truly are. People look up to you um, that you don't even know are doing so. <laughs> so if you could... You know, the, the, the kids who are younger than you, what advice do you have for them in Santa Maria here that are looking up to you? Yeah, it's been interesting knowing um, you're kind of become, I've become like a role model and a lot of people look up to me and that's like, you just have a lot, that's a lot of power you have over other kids to try to like inspire them and change like their paths in life. So I think the biggest um, lesson I've learned and lesson I can give others is the sky is definitely never the limit. Like, reach for that sky and keep on going. Um, and never be afraid of what you might get get feedback. Um, no's should always just feel what you're doing and the success you're trying to go for and the goals you've had. No goal is big enough for anybody. You should always, always try to accomplish whatever you set your mind to. And don't ever think anything is impossible. I think that is um, truly one of the biggest lessons I learned. Not impossible, like I said in my value return speech, it's just a word. Definitely keep on going and reach for whatever you have your mind set on. Mm -hmm. I was able to be there for your valedictorian speech. It was really inspirational. What what drove you to write that and speak in terms of the messages for the students that day? I think um, I always, I always actually always had a dream of writing the valedictorian speech and being up there, but I knew I would have to work really, really hard for it. I think um, I actually looked at a, had a lot of like looked at a lot of valedictorian speeches to try to get to the point of writing my own speech. But I think from the get go, I wanted to give a message. Um, we're about to embark on a whole another stage of our lives, and what I wanted to tell my senior my senior graduating class, I've had a lot of memories with them. What I wanted to tell them is, if you don't like something, like. Focus on the issue, get informed, like don't ever think any issues since it doesn't affect you does not should never affect you because it will affect you whether you want it to or not. Get informed and make a change in the areas that you are passionate about. Don't sit back and be compliant with anything that's going around. You should definitely go out there and change what you don't like or change what you want to become or change. Just make do something to get the change you want because change doesn't just come along easily without any work for it. So I think that's the biggest lesson. I just wanted to impact that in their hearts and just 
give them that lesson as, and message as they go off to college and succeed in wherever, whatever aspects they will be succeeding. There were over 500 graduates that day. I think you inspired them all <laughs> to do that and reach for the stars and, and not have any limits. And you, you talked about wanting to pursue Harvard Law degree. What might you intend on doing with that degree? Um, I think from the get-go, I kind of already have a, uh, a kind of an idea of what I want to do with my Harvard Law degree. Um, so coming from Mexico to the United States, immigration has always been um, a hot topic in my household or something we've talked about because it does it does involve us. It involves my family. It's involved me, our family from from the start. So I kind of want to, um, with my law degree, maybe get into the immigration law and kind of just give a voice to the people I grew up with and people like people in this community who do, don't have that voice and just would like to see somebody that understands where they're coming from, that comes from the same roots, um, just help them out and be that voice for them. Because I think I can. I, I've, I have a lot of knowledge and I've met a lot of people and I just really want to help them out. So I think that's kind of what my law degree would be aiming for. That's great. You've talked about mentors that you've had. You've talked about your mother today. Some. What are some of the other, or who are the, some of the other mentors that you've had in your life so far? Um, I think the, um, another one, the biggest one, he's kind of like my second dad would be uh, my dairy coach, Mr. Powell. Um, coming to the FFA program, I started class with him. I had agricultural biology with him, and he was the first person I met in the FFA program, the first ag teacher I ever had. But he also, as soon as I joined his team, he took that father role but, and that coach role and everything else. He obviously wanted us to aim for our best, always, always be competitive and win and throw ourselves in 100% of what we're doing. But another, behind the scenes, he was also that teacher that just wanted you to succeed and be somebody better in life, like grow up and be an, a wonderful young adult. And he would always be there asking, if you need anything, come to me. And if you need advice, I will be here. If you need any help in anything, whether it be family life, life, or mm -hmm. school life, educational life, anything, just go to him whenever we, whenever I needed to. And he definitely became like my second father. And him and his wife kind of, they kind of adopted me. So it's been, an, he's... He's one of the biggest mentors I had in all of my high school career. And I told him I will probably be calling him every week and, you know, from Harvard and asking for advice, things like that. Um, definitely. Um, I also had my life, uh, my land judging coach, um, Mr. DiBernardi. Another bis big aspect, um, he was a big mentor for me, too. Every other um, FFA teacher I had, an agriculture teacher. And I had some outside, um, my a ASB director, Mr. Salazar, he also really impacted my life. Um, he kind of showed me the ins and outs and how passionate somebody should be at their job. And some other teachers, like Ms. Hennings, my history teacher, I will always, she's kind of the, I always tell her I'm majoring in history because of her and her AP US history class was amazing. I would retake that class anytime if I could. So yeah, those have been some of the mentors that have definitely helped me along the way. That's really great. So let's switch gears and talk about basketball for a minute. Yeah. So you were captain of your basketball team. How did you get in involved in basketball or when? So I actually started in basketball in junior high. Um, I was a hawk, so that was super cool. And then um, coming to high school, I knew I wanted to continue. It's always going to be one of my passions. I'm probably going to try to do some like intramural at Harvard. Um, I went to summer conditioning be before my freshman year, got to meet the coaches and everything else. And I knew this was for me. I knew I needed to do it. It's kind of like a stress reliever being on the court. It's like a new home, just something you get to do. And so I just continued with it and they became my family. Definitely. I owe a lot to that court. That's like my new, that's been my home being able to like de-stress and throw some elbows and just have fun. <laughs> it, that's what I love about basketball. It's kind of, you just let it all out. And that's like your one, like hours of concentration on one sport and just being physical. So I love the Basketball There's sport. a lot of commonalities with the different things that you've uh, been involved in. Competition is one that's coming out clearly, <laughs> but family is another, yes. and you know leadership truly. Um, and, you know, when I think about all that you do, there's, there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> Talk to us about time management. How do you, how did you and will you manage all of these competing priorities? Um, so I, I've learned a lot of lessons about time management all four years of high school. I kind of struggled with it in the beginning, definitely. I just, um, like I said, I love getting involved. So I think I got involved in too much things. I was struggling. I couldn't do sports. And then, um, so I had to... Um, let some things go. I think that's the biggest lessons I had. Uh, Mr. Powell gave me great advice. He told me, um, if you want to do something, get involved in what you're passionate and do it well instead of doing so many things and doing everything half well. So that's what I did. I had to drop a lot of the things, a lot of the clubs. Um, so I focused in on like three clubs, FFA, ASB, Key Club, um, Spanish Honor Society, and then basketball. So I focused on the few things that I was truly passionate about. I knew would get me far. And I, I think I did those 
to the best of my ability. So I think that's the biggest thing, time management focus. Go with what you're passionate about. No, don't try to do so many things that you can't focus on anything. Also, um, I'm working on this, trying to get better. Always keep that calendar or on your phone, use your apps, try to keep time of what, uh, manage, manage what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, those are always handy tools. And also just know, like you said, we don't have a million hours in the day. You have to realize that you only have so much time. So Right. I took notes while you were talking, so I'll, <laughs> I'll intend to do that too. So what about, you know, there's time management and managing all the things that you have to do, but what about having uh, time off or balance or kind of recharging? How did you do that? <laughs> That's actually a really funny question. I've um, actually just, having just graduated, this has been the most time off I've ever had for myself. It's kind of crazy. I remember the first day of um, summer vacation, I, t I told myself, what am I doing with myself? I paced my, in my house because it's a crazy feeling knowing I have time for myself. I kind of didn't have time for myself in all of high school. I remember the, first, the only weekend I've ever had for my, time for myself where it was truly myself was actually the first weekend of like my freshman year. So I don't really have time off, but it's definitely important when whatever small time you do have, definitely focus on what you love doing and that'll help you rest up. And for me, that's like reading books or like going outside and like laying in the grass and reading. I love reading. So that will always be my recharge battery mode. And so definitely do the things that help you relax whatever time you do have. That's mm -hmm. great. Great. Again, I wrote down the advice that you gave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to follow those directions too. Um, really appreciate it. Mariana, as we are winding down with this interview, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of give some messages out to members of the community. So for our teachers out there, what might you have to say to them? I think the biggest message for teachers, uh, first of all, coming from a student that's been helped by a lot of teachers, thank you for believing me always. However, the message I do have is that teachers are gonna see kids continuously passing through classrooms, but please never stop believing in what their students can accomplish because having somebody believe in you, that's one of the greatest feelings you can ever have. And I know teachers are in a unique role. They can do that for a lot of kids. So always, always believe in every single kid you meet. They have the potential to definitely change the world. So I think that's been my message for the teachers. That's great. I, I think we should end with that because your message to the teachers is a message for so many people. And as you say, change the world. Mariana, I think that we would all agree that you're somebody who can make that change happen. We're so excited to have spent some time with you today. You exude passion, vision, leadership, um, just an incredible person inside and out. Can't wait to see all that you do. Hope you can recharge, um, get uh, some time to yourself, but Thank you so much for, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Salcedo. It was definitely a pleasure to be here and an honor to have met you and be able to conversate with you. And I will definitely keep this community in my heart and, you know, bring back and put this community on the map. So Wonderful. Thank you. I'm Susan Salcedo, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Local Leaders.